Is it worth it to keep old contacts on your phone, social media, or um, any place else if you haven't talked with them in a while? That is one of the questions I have been recently asked. It's not easy today really to decide this because decades ago it was quite clear. clear. We lived around people we were supposed to be talking to, so it, there was no question. Today this, this is true. You move, especially if you move. You have a list of people on your phone or your Facebook or any place else and you don't really know, okay, do I keep them? Do I delete them? Um, do I write them a message of wishing Happy Christmas or anything else? This is not easy. Let's talk today whether we have to actually deal with this, how we have to deal with this, and what are the best ways to figure out which contacts to keep. Welcome to my channel about communication, friendship, loneliness, and self-discovery. It is dedicated to the analysis and practical tips in all of those areas. If you're interested, please subscribe to my channel and share it on social media. So one of my subscribers recently asked me, she said, I'm not sure whether I have to keep all of those contacts in my list. I have recently started noticing that since I changed a lot uh, during recent years, I have become quite a different person and I don't think I can connect with those people on the same level that it was years ago. So the question is, does it even have a point to have them on my list and really maybe see them and get in touch with them. And so she asked for advice what she should do about this and which contacts should she keep. Uh, maybe she should keep everyone or no one and uh, what would be the best approach. So I would like to start with the more practical way because as always I think we can overthink a lot of a lot of times many situations but um, sometimes it can be simplified in some cases here i assume the problem is that the person doesn't have them as friends it's most probably just acquaintances and yes it is a bit difficult to decide do i keep them or not but here i would say I think this, the decisive point would be, do you actually plan on seeing them? Let's say if it's a question of former colleagues or maybe your former classmates, do you actually go to those uh, meetings uh, with them once a year? Do you see your former colleagues somewhere? Because if you do, maybe it would be uncomfortable to delete them from your friends list and never call them and never really congratulate them on anything. Maybe it just would be awkward for you. If you're the person who cares about those things, because for me, for example, it would be a bit awkward to delete somebody I know I occasionally see um, somewhere around. So um, that would be a deal breaker for me. I would not say, okay, let's, let me just keep that person because what, why, why delete them? With other people who live uh, very far away, I know I will never see them again. Most likely I will never see them again. Um, maybe not. Maybe, maybe you shouldn't keep them. If, however, you have some people you think you might still connect to, one quite simple and straightforward thing to do is just to reach out to them and ask them quite simply how they are doing. We haven't talked in a while. Maybe we should catch up. Maybe we should have a have a call. I always recommend a call, a video call or a phone call because actually a video call better than the phone call because you don't see the person during the phone call. Why? Because texting is different. Texting is not the same. I would say texting is good for certain situations and for short communication just here and there during the time of day. But if you want to really catch up with someone, I think it would be more telling to you both if you have any kind of connection still, or maybe you have a new connection you could establish. You should just have a video chat and try to see whether you have something in common. That's quite simple. You exchange the information about what you have been doing in recent times because maybe you have seen each you haven't seen each other in a while. And that's how you basically see is there something or not because you can feel it. Okay. In text, it's not necessarily given that you can feel that because in text, it's quite, uh, it's just, it's just different. I'm not going to go into detail. It's just very different. Uh, with video communication, you can convey the meaning of your words a bit better. You can see that you can look in the eyes, the person. This is why it's very important to have. Even if you say you're afraid of video, uh, because people today say that they are afraid of video. Some people are afraid of audio messages, afraid of many, many things, but you have to, get out of your shell and try to do that because the more you do that the easier it will get plus don't forget you're not on live tv it's not going to be posted anywhere actually so uh, be a bit more relaxed about this 
And during that conversation, you can see whether there's actually anything. I have done that some, some, at some point with some of my former um, friends um, from my earlier life, so to speak, from student life, from school life. Yeah, we don't have as much connection. Like, I had one very good friend. She's really the best friend that I've ever had. But we live very far away from each other. And I understand that we have very different lives. And we do not have that same level of connection that we did before. Not on the emotional level. It's just that our lives are too different. And that is also, in a way, a deal breaker. Yes, we can exchange a couple of messages a year in terms of congratulating each other, um, looking at new pictures of each other, but, but that's as far as it goes because our lives have become too different. I wouldn't, however, delete her from my list because why would I? Maybe I could go where she lives again and see her and I would definitely write to her. So it does depend on whether you have even something left because sometimes... You do not have to be on the same level now in life with the person. You have to be just... If you're both inclined to be nostalgic, that is also, by the way, very important. If you're both inclined to be nostalgic, you both have, to, you both have the tendency to see people from your life from earlier years as that anchor to your earlier life. As it means as soon as you see them, you kind of relieve those situations and if those uh, things were positive you would be happy about this like maybe you were playing in childhood um, together in the snow and you had a snowball fight I don't know and this is something you really um, are nostalgic about and when you see that person you remember how you did that so why not keep them in your friends on your friends list just because it's nice to sometimes reach out and talk about your childhood maybe at some point and so on. So it, it does it does depend on what is actually left between you. You have to kind of test it. You cannot do that by yourself. That's important. You cannot decide by yourself whether that person now has anything in common with you or not based on how it was years ago. That is a mistake. Some people say, say well, we were good friends in, in um, at university or at school, so I'm keeping them, but they're not that person anymore, or you are not that person anymore, or most likely you both are not those people anymore. Not in terms of you got worse or better, it's just that you become different with age. With time, you, you change, you have many experiences, and it changes you. So don't also uh, fit that person into that one standard that they were fitting in years ago. Uh, it might not work out anymore. And if it does, then why not keep that contact? So try to kind of feel what is what is left. And maybe nothing is left, but maybe now you can establish something new. Maybe it can happen that you were quite different years years uh, years ago, but now you talk and you understand that you actually now have something in common. It can also happen. I've had that with a couple of people from my student years also. It was very interesting because back then we were actually not that close. But then years ago, since they uh, years later, since they were on my contact list, just because they, we were studying together. I noticed that we can actually bond a lot better over certain unexpected things that we were not bonding back then. So it is an expect life is always unexpected. So try to feel what is right. Try to kind of um, test it first what works, what doesn't. And in order to do that, you need to either meet with them. You either can write a short text message and say, you know, we haven't seen each other in a while. How you, how do you, what do you think about going out and having a coffee somewhere? Or you can have a video chat if you don't, uh, if you cannot meet. So um, it is important to catch up with them on a f on a deeper level than just how how are you? Hey, how are you? And what have, what what news do you have? What has changed? I mean, okay, it can it can be it can be given to you. Like they say, okay, now I have a child, or I have a second child, or a third child. Now I have another job. But what's next? Um, it's not something that is bonding you. Not the facts are bonding you. What is bonding you is your emotions about those facts. Like if you say. I have now a job, a new job that I really, really like. This is something I was really hoping for my whole life that I would have that job. And you, for example, have a similar situation. Maybe it's not so um, wonderful, but you say, you know, I have also gotten a better job than before. This is how you bond. You don't bond because you just both have new jobs. You have to actually explain what it is so great about it or what is so bad about it. You can also bad, bond about bad things. So be more a bit more outspoken about uh, how you perceive life in general. Because people today lack that ability or 
willingness to share how they feel about something. They feel like it will put them on the spot too much, but it, it won't actually. You won't, you won't share something very intimate, right? You're sharing something about your job. Maybe you're speaking about your boss. Maybe you're saying something about the school your child goes to. It's not so intimate. Don't perceive it as all so over, overly intimate so that you can never tell that to anyone. Share that with someone. I have found people in my life oversharing some very deep things and people were really impressed by that. They said, that's so interesting. I had no idea that one can feel about this this, the, this way, even if they weren't feeling the same way. Or they said, you know, I feel very similar way. And that that's how we bonded. And yes, it may be a bit, maybe made me a bit vulnerable because I opened up um, about certain things. But at the same time, it's not so terrible. I mean, w what is it that they're going to do with that information? Most probably they won't do anything with that information. Let's face it, most of that things, of those things we tell to somebody is not going to go anywhere. Okay, so I'm not saying you should go around and tell people how you feel about the deepest uh, fears of your life. That's not what I'm saying. But... I hope you get the point that you have to be open up, you have to open up a little bit to people, a little bit more than just to an acquaintance. And if you feel like you can do that with someone from your old life, why not do that? Okay? Try to see how it goes. Of course, observe the person, see whether they're even interested in this. It's not like you blindly do this. You, you have to see whether they are actually ready to hear some of that, whether they ask it, whether they show genuine interest, and so on. So it is totally fine. Feel free to do so. Don't be too constrained to overanalyze too much. Shall I say it or shall I not say it? Observe rather the person, how they behave, than your feelings about uh, whether you should say something. Because if they um, position themselves in a way that you can trust them, then maybe it's a good way. But again, of course, I'm not saying that you should just in the first conversation with someone you haven't seen in a while, uh, share your deepest feelings about something. I'm just saying if, if it progresses, like if you have a conversation with them and if it lasts for for a while, be it texting or video or personal, personal meeting, you can open up a bit more because at some point the problem is today that conversations fade out because people do not, are not willing to go further with this. That is a mistake because the relationships of any sort, they're dynamic. They don't stay static. And if you don't um, develop them consciously, they will fade out. You will get disappointed because you will not even know sometimes why it happened. So with old acquaintances, it's the same thing. It's basically kind of like new acquaintances because you, you don't see them the way they are now. And you kind of get to know them again, anew, okay? So be willing to get to know them. Be willing to see how they are. And that is how you make your conclusions. So another point about removing contacts, especially on social media, is, I think, a very important one. It does depend on how you actually manage your social platform. Let's say it's Facebook. Do you share some personal information there that you don't want others to see, unless it's just the people you trust? Because if that's the case, maybe you can delete some friends you think you could not trust with that information, but you would like to share that information with the rest of the friends. So it does depend on this how public you are on your uh, profile. If it's a close profile for just people who are in your life very close to you, then that's okay. But again, you would not add anyone who is not um, trustworthy. So it does depend on this. If you don't really share almost anything, because many profiles are like that, that people don't really share much about themselves, then that's maybe even not important who is in your friends list because they will not really see much um, of your life anyway. About developing uh, self-development in your life. It is a very healthy thing. This is what my uh, subscriber wrote to me. She said that I know I have changed and I have changed for the better. And I don't want those contacts to see me the way I was back then. And that's a very healthy development. Whatever that was, she didn't tell me what that is and I don't, don't have to know. But that's a very, very healthy development, actually. Like if you had some trouble before and you were bonding with those people based on that tr uh, trouble, or maybe you had uh, really a certain image and they remember that image about you and they would not be able to see the new you now maybe you don't need those friends of course not i can tell that based on myself i was also trying to improve myself in certain areas of life and i know that it's a very normal and healthy process that some people just are going to be left in during that process you're going to be 
feeling not connected to them anyway. You're not going to feel secure sharing something and that's normal. And don't be sad about this. People come and go, come and go. It's a normal process. Very few people stay in our lives for a very long time. Even relatives are not sometimes capable of that. So don't be too self-conscious about this. Don't, too, don't overthink it too much. If you have to make that decision, which contacts I keep, which contacts I don't keep, which people I see, which people I don't see. If you feel like there is nothing, to be honest, I while I was reading that question, my first initial response was, if you have to ask, you know the answer. If you have to ask, do I keep those people as my contacts, you know that the answer is no. Because you will not be asking that about people who are dear to you, right? And the rest depends on how you deal with a list of contacts that is basically dead, that you don't have any communication with, right? So if you feel like occasionally you can reach out or occasionally they reach out and you both like it, then why, why not keep them? At least some of them who do this. But in most cases, th those lists are usually dead because if you feel, uh, if you see that the, the people have hundreds or thousands of people as their contacts, that's, there is no way that you communicate with them on a regular basis, right? So it's just about what you think is appropriate for your public profile. So the question how to live is maybe the hardest one because if you're a conscientious person who does not like hurting other people, you might not like to delete them. Uh, it it's very hard for me to say what you should do because it is a personal thing. Some people delete other contacts without any problem if they feel like they don't have any any uh, level of communication for them. It's very, it's very hard for me to say what to do there, to be honest, because I cannot say do that or do this. Um, as I said be, be, before in the beginning, uh, it is important to understand do you see them? Because if you see them on occasion and you deleted them from your list, it might be awkward to see them because like, do you greet them? Do, you, do they greet you? Because of course, people might notice that, that you deleted them and then be a little bit uneasy about this or offended. Um, I would not delete just, uh, I would not delete anyone to be honest, because uh, why? They are not really disturbing me, unless they're disturbing me. But then, of course, you can block the person, delete them from your list. Otherwise, most people are just there, right? Uh, mo mo most people are just present on social media. They're not really doing so much there. So it's not very interesting uh, to, or not interesting, it's not very productive, I think, to deal with that question. Just try to figure out what is best for you in that particular moment. If you feel like... I mean, what, why Why generally you would have to deal with this anyway? Do you really have to delete them? This is, this is hard to say, to be honest. And if you do, if you feel that you have to delete them, then delete them. Then you don't care what is what they're going to be thinking. Most probably they won't even notice anyway. And even if they notice and even if they get offended, well, you, you haven't been talking in a while anyway. Okay? So it should not really shake their world so profoundly. I'm generally... I'm generally advocating for the idea that people in our lives that we keep, um, phones, social media, anywhere, should be the people that we're actually communicating with. I, for example, am not a fan of adding just anyone to my friends list on social media. So uh, people who are on my list, they're either, I know that they're reading my posts or maybe they we are writing to each other in messages. They rarely leave any comments publicly, but we have some kind of connection with them. So, uh, but that's my approach. If, for some people, it's a different approach. It's all about what you're actually looking for. Are you looking for a friends list that is presentable? Let's say 100 or 200 people, then it's okay. If, or if maybe you're so precise, so um, detailed about this that you say, well, I only want to have people who I'm, I'm actually communicating with. Then, of course, you would have to delete the ones that you're not really talking to. I invite you guys to join me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Quora, where you'll find additional information on communication and about me. See the links in the description and in the banner of the channel. I'll see you next time. Leave your comments, likes, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time.